day, peace world. Thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. I'm the channel owner here, Wood, uh, breaking down everything and and uh, you know hopefully providing some uh, thoughtful. Um, won't say unbiased, but uh, just you know an interesting perspective on the world of sports. I might talk a little boxing, but I definitely wanted to get into what I saw last night in Maui or at the Maui Invitational with the uh, the University of Dayton Flyers. Their 89-62 defeat of Virginia Tech. Um, man, 49 points at, ha at the half. Uh, came back and, uh, like I said, just finished with 89. So what, that's... Uh, Terrible doing math right now. Not quite doubling the first the first half output, but I've watched tons of uh, college basketball games where it's you know it's 18, 15 at the half or 23, 20 at the half. Uh, but to come out like I said and score 49 points, I think they hit eight or nine three pointers. Um, solid defensively. You know, and Virginia Tech was a very, you know, that was a very scrappy team last year in the, uh, in the, in the uh, ACC. And then the day before to put down, uh, you know, for uh, beat Georgia by, I think, 17 or 19 points. Georgia, I believe, has the fantastic uh, freshman. So, um, solid team, man. And it's kind of awkward because I turn on the TV not having really seen these guys much to this point. Like they were just 4-0 going into the game. But uh, it's kind of a revamped team with the exceptions of Mike Sell and uh, and uh, Trey Landers. Who says it? I think that. And then, I mean, Toppin is a, is a, is a sophomore. Um, but, wow. I mean, the big question becomes, I mean, if, you, if Jay Billis didn't let you know you know everything that you needed to know about the team's uh, postseason chances, and you know the impact they could have in the in the, in the Atlantic Ten, and then uh, Topin himself, or Obi uh, himself, in in terms of uh, where he falls in the draft. I mean, you've been able to form your own opinion. Uh, my question with with the kid is, you know, is he that next Atlantic? Actually, is Dayton? You know, position to kind of be that next impact type of uh, A-10 school. You know, Xavier's been there in the past. Uh, Massachusetts was there in the past with um, when Cal was there. Um, you know, St. Joseph's had the phenomenal year maybe four or five years ago. Um, but, you know, just that 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 Atlantic 10 team that really can hang on a national level um, are, is it is it just their time I think one of the things that's always kind of been there that's kind of uh, been their Achilles heel in previous years is they haven't had the big men to uh, play with the bigger schools now why Obi is you know is just uh, he's not quite a big man I mean but he's 6'9 which is big for college but now we have a guy who's very athletic. He can put it on. What he doesn't, what he can't do um, with size and brawn inside and, and length, you know, he definitely adds the, he can put it on the ground, shoot threes. Uh, you know, he, he's excellent footwork and, and, and quickness, you know, in, uh, in small places. You saw that with the baseline spin uh, for the dunk. This dude is is, is is truly legit. And, a, and a, you know, I wouldn't say, uh, I was thinking of Marcus Canby earlier. But, it, and then for him, you know, is he that next uh, player from the A-10 that has a, a real and a lasting impact in the NBA? Uh, David West out of uh, Xavier when they were in the Big Ten, one of my favorite A-10 players. Uh, they, Lamar Odom when he was at, uh, you know, Rhode Island. Uh, Canby, as I just mentioned, it's a couple other guys out there, I believe. Uh, you know, Crawford, I think, left Xavier a little too early. The younger brother it was Jordan Crawford. You know, I think he left uh, college maybe a year early, maybe hurt himself a little bit. 
But uh, I mean, it's been tons of guys who who've had that uh, ability and just you know got to the NBA and, and, and didn't pan out. Uh, there was also another big man from Xavier, Aaron something. He, he never really became a big time scorer, but he was a he was a power forward on uh, a few teams and, and had a lengthy career. But you know, Obi has uh, definitely the sky's the limit. Uh, the only other thing that I would take away from team, you know, is I know it's in Maui, it's all loose, and you know, it's early season. It's been a lot of hard work putting in, put in to get ready for the season. I just wondered, would anybody watching the game uh, have a problem with some of the on-court celebrations? I, I wouldn't say it was in poor sportsmanship or anything. It's young guys having fun, uh, but you know, the nights aren't always going to be that easy. It's not always going to be uh, the chemistry and the, and, 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 and the flow of the game is not always going to be there, uh, you know, that you can act that way. I didn't think anything was really inappropriate. Like I said, it's celebrations is a huge part of all sports right now. Uh, but like I said, there, there will, times will soon come when you're not up by 20, you know, you're not a 8 of 11 or 8 of 13 or whatever from three-point range. You know, it's going to be some times where, uh, you know, the momentum is with the other squad. And, um, you know, we'll see how you handle that then. But like I said, man, it, it's early in the season. You're on this trip uh, to Maui. It's, it's Maui's, uh, I mean, Hawaii's uh, a very uh, loose, you know, place, easygoing atmosphere and whatnot. Uh, you know, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I just, I just wondered, did it rub, any, rub anybody the wrong way? You know, in, in, in the, for the Washington Redskins last week, there's a lot of controversy for uh, Dwayne Haskins Jr. taking a, a, a selfie with, uh, you know, the, some fans. And missing the victory formation or you know the kneel down uh, at the end of the game and he caught some flack for that and I believe was fined by the team and some Redskins fans were just all on the kids but you know for that decision so uh, little things can be big things to somebody lastly I guess you know to close out with some brief bite down boxing talk and I just want to send a shout out to the uh, Tyler McCreary team fighting on ESPN. Damn, I think they might be on the plus this week. Yeah, I think they're on the plus. ESPN plus. I believe it gets going at 10 p.m. Uh, Saturday. Tyler is stepping up to face uh, you know, former champion, um, two division champion, and uh, Carl Frampton. I believe Frampton is 32 years old. Um, this is going to be at a catch weight of 128. Should have been uh, at 130 though, but but Tyler was just had his first fight up at 130, uh, so it's probably no problem for him to come down and make this 128. Uh, but you know the experience gap is significant, and um, you know you can go back and check the live stream that I did with uh, Tyler's coach Lamar Wright last uh, was that last Friday. We did that talking through some of the things. Uh, there's also an interview with me and uh, Tyler McCreary after his win in um, at MGM National Harbor several months ago on the Lopez Nakatani card. Uh, when you know, admittedly, he came off of a, a performance against Jesse Chris Rosales that uh, you know wasn't uh, you know didn't live up to his expectations and his standards. So uh, it's obvious, it, obviously it's not the ideal situation where he's coming out of a, a, a dominant performance up at a new weight. Uh, his, co his coach, Lamar Wright, did talk about some factors that led to the, uh, you know, kind of the showing that we saw. Uh, and, you know, you just got to come back and, and, and make it happen. And um, also with, with uh, Frampton coming out of... Uh, his loss from Warrington, you know, it's not like he's raised the bar for himself. So, you know, there's some questions there. Uh, Tyler, I believe, will have an advantage in uh, length 
and maybe even size and whatnot, uh, strength, younger fighter. Uh, but like I said, man, he's got a lot of experience to make up for. Um, and, you know, and you got sometimes you got to shoot your shot, man. And so uh, it's it's an excellent opportunity for him, and we'll we'll see what happens. Um, that's about it, man. I, I don't. I, 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 there's one other point I was gonna make, but uh, and, and you know, and, and Tyler. You know, he's been the fourth and fifth guy in the picture with Adrian Broner, Robert Easter Jr., uh, Tank Davis. Now Richardson Hitchens has been in the picture, you know, training with Tank Davis and whatnot and traveling together. And, and Tyler's been, you know, like I said, the third or fourth guy in the photo sometimes. Uh, you know, it's a chance for him to uh, step out and, and realize his goals and dreams and position himself for the big steps that he's been working on the last three years. He's been a world ranked fighter for the last uh, two and a half, you know, easy two and a half years. So, uh, you know, he's been, um, he's been chomping at the bit and whatnot. So uh, best of luck to the kid. Other than that, man, let me get on off of here. Have a wonderful holiday, uh, you know, weekend with the family. And, and, and like I said, get out there and create those moments and enjoy yourself. Pay me no mind. Sports and entertainment. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Peace.